First aid. Lee here. Yes. First aid. I need some help. Can you tell me your exact location? At the 3500 level. My gas. My partner's been gas. I need some help right away. Skin dots complete. I got 150 bar. Take the cage from down to 35. We'll proceed in and fresh air, get to the wreckage station, check on that guy, and make sure he's okay and proceed to the uh, danger. Poisonous gas can be a miner's worst nightmare. What you've just witnessed is the unfortunate result of failing to recognize a life-threatening situation. A heading with the fan turned off can hold the same deadly hazards as a confined space. Hazards such as oxygen deficiency and a buildup of poisonous gases that may overcome a person in minutes or even seconds. Providing a steady supply of fresh air is one of the main functions of the mine ventilation system. Powerful surface fans force air down into the mine via shafts and raises. Air is then directed to the working areas through main airways and distributed into each workplace by smaller fans, ducts, and tubing. As ventilating air circulates throughout the mine, temperature and humidity are controlled. But more important, harmful airborne contaminants are diluted and exhausted back to surface. In this program, we'll examine some of the hazards associated with mine atmospheres and what you can do to protect yourself and others from injury or illness. We'll identify some of the common sources of airborne contaminants, their health effects, and how they can be controlled to ensure a safe and healthy working environment. And we'll also look more closely at why this unfortunate accident happened, how it affected the victim's co-worker, and how these circumstances could have been prevented. June 20th, that's a, a day I'll never forget. Even now, I find it hard to talk about. Well, that morning, we were driving a new drift off the main ramp. We just finished blasting around in 35402. After the blast, Joe and I went over to the rack to try and get this fan to go, but it wouldn't start. Yeah, it kept tripping out or something. Oh, well, Joe was a high baller, and he he wanted to get in there right away and get it mucked out. And we both realized we had to get it bolted in time for the cross ship. I went over to the phone and called the shop and told them. They said they'd send an electrician right away. And we waited half an hour. He never showed up. I told Joe I'd go to the shop and get him myself. Now, I told Joe before I left that I told him to stay at the entrance. I told, I told him not to go in the drift. He knew how dangerous that was. Well, he told me he'd stay where he was. And I went down the manway, out to the drift, to the shop. I guess I was gone half an hour. 
When I got back, couldn't see Joe or the scoop at the entrance. And I got this awful feeling. I know we went in there. It's my guess he just got fed up with waiting there and went in to wash down the muck pile. He was always a go-getter. He could never sit still, even for a minute. Most days, Joe never even stopped for lunch. He must have realized he couldn't work in that kind of air. I mean, how could anybody work in that much gas and smoke? I just hightailed her right into that drift. And I could see the scoop parked up against the wall, still running. There's all this smoke and diesel fumes everywhere. It smelled like burnt powder. Hey, Joe! I could see through the smoke. Joe! Hey, Joe! Joe! See Joe hunched over the controls. It didn't look like he was moving. Routine blasting operations are a primary source of airborne contamination in underground mines. Once a blast has been detonated, the ventilation system requires sufficient time in order to restore the quality of mine air to safe levels. If workers re-enter the area too soon, they may be exposing themselves to a dangerous atmosphere containing a lack of oxygen, harmful concentrations of carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide if sulfide ore bodies are being mined, and a more insidious group of gases known as the oxides of nitrogen. Noticeable by its burnt powder odor, inhalation of even small amounts of oxides of nitrogen can cause serious damage to the respiratory system. It can result in pulmonary edema and even death. One of the alarming things about exposure to these oxides is that the victim may show no visible signs of severe poisoning until many hours later. The fatal results of exposure may be days or weeks afterwards. The other major afterblast gas is carbon monoxide, long considered one of the greatest of all hazards that may be encountered in an underground mine. Nicknamed the silent killer, carbon monoxide is especially dangerous because it cannot be detected by the senses. It will enter the lungs and pass into the bloodstream almost immediately. In fact, carbon monoxide will be absorbed into the blood as much as 300 times easier than oxygen. It literally starves the body of oxygen, causing chemical asphyxiation. Not only is carbon monoxide an afterblast gas, but it is also found in diesel exhaust emissions. The widespread use of large trackless equipment introduces a host of contaminants into mine air. In addition to carbon monoxide, these also include oxides of nitrogen, fuel vapors, oil mist, formaldehyde, sulfur dioxide, and soot. In high concentrations, diesel contaminants may cause simple irritation of the eyes and nose, or more serious damage to the lungs and other organs. Without sufficient volume of fresh air from the ventilation system to dilute and remove contaminants, the surrounding air can quickly become hot, smoky, and extremely hazardous to breathe. In my eyes, they, they started burning and, and watering so bad I couldn't see. My head, it, uh, my head ached so bad that I thought I was going to explode. And uh, they told me afterwards that I, that I dragged them out of there, but I don't remember. I don't even remember phoning for help. By entering a heading that had not been properly ventilated, Joe had exposed himself to a deadly mixture of asphyxiating afterblast gases. To make things even worse, he had left his engine running in a heading already deficient in oxygen as a result of the blast. Recognizing dangerous conditions means knowing the nature of potential hazards, their sources and warning properties, and how they can affect your health. What's more, everyone must understand how to control airborne contaminants at their source. 
This is the most effective way to ensure that you and your coworkers are protected at all times. Never, under any circumstances, re-enter mine workings until ventilation systems have restored the quality of mine air to safe levels. And treat all unventilated headings the same as you would a confined space. If for any reason air is not being provided to a working face, the entranceway must be roped off and a keep out sign posted. Preventing a buildup of airborne contaminants is also ensured by maintaining ventilation tubing in good shape at all times. Old tubing that is worn and perforated should be changed immediately. Neglecting these important precautions puts not only yourself at risk, but others downstream in the ventilation circuit as well. When hanging ventilation tubing, be sure it's properly aligned. This guarantees that air moves easily through the system with as little resistance as possible. Also ensure that ducts and tubing are installed close enough to the face so that enough air is provided to adequately dilute and remove any contaminants that may be present. Since the 1960s, the use of trackless equipment has become the dominant mining method. This has forced mine planners to design ventilation systems that provide much greater volumes of air. The increase in volume is necessary in order to deal with higher levels of air contaminants, such as oxides of nitrogen, carbon monoxide, fuel vapors, oil mist, fumes, sulfur dioxide, and formaldehyde. In order to maintain the quality of mine air at safe levels, additional responsibility is placed on operators and mechanics to ensure that diesel equipment is maintained in good working order. Regular maintenance ensures that diesel engines are properly tuned and all types of exhaust cleaners are not contributing to any unnecessary mine air contamination. When it comes to health and safety, nothing is more important than the quality of the air we breathe. Fresh air is something most of us take for granted on surface, but not down here. Learn to recognize what the hazards are, where they're found, and what it takes to protect yourself and others from injury or illness. Life is too precious to take chances with the mine ventilation system. You know, Joe, Joe was a damn good miner. I don't know what the heck he was thinking about. He knew better than to go into there with, with no ventilation. I don't know what he was thinking. Guess I'll never know.